The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello and welcome to today's webinar, Six Ways to Boost Your Personal Brand to Get a Promotion, offered by the Oregon State University Alumni Association in partnership with Oregon State's Professional and Continuing Education Unit. I'm Greg Aronoff, the Marketing and Communications Manager here with PACE, and I am joined by Yulia Dennis from the Alumni Association and Ashley Ward from the International University Alliance. Welcome and thank you so much for being here. Now before we get started, I'm going to share our agenda for the day. So I work for Professional and Continuing Ed, which is the non-credit arm of the university. We partner with colleges across campus to offer open enrollment classes to the public on subjects ranging from workforce training to gardening to beer making. We're always excited to continue our partnership with Yulia Dennis from the Alumni Association. And I'm sure some of you have joined us for other webinars on the career series. So we are excited to have Yulia and Ashley here today to talk about your personal brain. And without further ado, I'm going to hand it off. Thank you, Greg. It's always great to partner with PACE on these webinars. And uh, my name is Yulia Dennis. I'm the Director for Alumni Career Services at the Oregon State University's Alumni Association. And it's always a pleasure to present these really great topics with OSU alumni, students, and other uh, community members who decide to join our series. So thank you everyone for attending. Uh, I'm going to be introducing our speaker and we did have Kyle Waraki also was scheduled to speak but unfortunately he wasn't able to make it so Ashley and I are going to be presenting this content to you today and I am very excited to have Ashley uh, join us again. She's, she did the last webinar as well and it's always wonderful to have her share her expertise uh, with, our, with our OSU community here. And so um, for myself, so I oversee and manage our alumni career programs, and that involves everything from one-on-one -on -one services to volunteers to career programs like this one. So I'll share a little bit more about what I do later. And uh, for now, I'm going to go ahead and uh, introduce Ashley. And Ashley Ward is one of our really awesome alumni career ambassadors. She's a 2011 grad from OSU. And she has been promoted several times and has applied these skills of personal branding towards her own career. And then the other really wonderful thing about Ashley is that she is really dedicated to helping other people learn this content as well. So she's been an amazing resource teaching OSU alumni and how to do the same thing. And she's attended, she's done webinars, she's done presentations in for in-person events. So I'm really thankful and grateful for Ashley for all the time that she spends helping out the alumni community. So I'll go ahead and have Ashley introduce herself and then we'll uh, go forward with the webinar. Thank you so much, Julia. Hi everyone, my name is Ashley Ward. Um, I'm a professional in the international higher education industry. My career has spanned public and nonprofit universities. Um, great opportunity to work in the Office of International Admissions at Oregon State and then again at Willamette University in their MBA program. And I currently work uh, for a consortium of universities who offer access for international students in the U.S. So it really aligns with my values and my interests. I am an energetic, personable communicator. Um, so I need to work with Yulia on these webinars and do presentations and contribute back to the Alumni Association where I can. I thrive in an environment that is ever-changing and dynamic. Uh, in my free time, I enjoy traveling in the Pacific Northwest with my husband in our VW Vanagon uh, with our dog named Trout. So it's a little bit about me. I'm really happy to be here with you today. This topic is near and dear to my heart. It's something that has really propelled my own career forward. And so I'm happy to be able to share with you the things I've learned that hopefully you can apply to your own life. Thank you, Ashley. That was great. And I loved uh, I loved the description of you traveling around. And uh, I know people can follow you as well and see pictures of your travels. So I think that's a really fun, um, fun way to connect with people. So thank you for sharing that. So uh, for this webinar today, feel free to ask questions during the webinar via the chat box. And we will be addressing questions throughout. So ask any time and we're going, to be, we're going to be addressing them. There's going to be a link to the presentation emailed to you afterwards. So feel free to take notes or look at the slide as needed. But you also receive the slides and the recording afterwards if you want to rewatch it or send it forward to someone else to watch. 
So I'll share briefly about the OSU Alumni Association Career Services. This is a really wonderful service and set of programs that we offer to alumni where we support your professional development and growth. We have a lot of different kinds of programs that we provide that help you move forward, including this career series. We also have in-person events. We have an alumni career ambassador program. We also offer one-on-one -on -one limited services. For example, we offer free resume reviews and we offer one-on-one -on -one conversations. So any kind of goal that you may have for your career, do reach out to me, we'll figure out a way to help you. And the great thing about alumni career services is that it's, it's a wonderful opportunity for both people who are looking for help and then people who are looking to help others to be involved. And Ashley's a prime example where we've worked a little bit one-on-one -on -one where I've assisted her in some cases and then she's assisted lots of other alumni and done things like this. So it's a really wonderful way if you're looking for ways to increase your network, get to know people. A lot of the topics that we're talking about today can definitely be applied to being involved in the Alumni Association. And there's really no better way to grow your network than to be involved with the Alumni Association. So I encourage you to reach out to me if you're interested in getting help or helping others. And then I'll turn over to Ashley to introduce our wonderful topic of personal branding. Thanks, Julia. And I just want to add a little bit of support to being involved in the Alumni Association. It's a fantastic opportunity for me. It has expanded my network. It's given me greater visibility in the industry of my own industry, which is important. Um, and I, I'm just so thankful that, that I've been able to be involved thus far. And I encourage anybody out there who's thinking about it to at least have a call with Julia and see what it entails. Um, because it's, it's really, uh, it's a great opportunity that you should take advantage of. So to introduce our topic about personal branding and why it matters. So I know some people might think that personal branding is a little, it might be fake. It might be projecting something out there that's, that's not true or, or that if you're really being authentic, then it shouldn't matter. But I'm here to tell you that everyone has a personal brand whether you have developed it or not. And so why wouldn't you want to have a personal brand that is strategic, that is curated, and that absolutely reflects who you are and what you're are? Because you are already projecting out to the world a brand. People already know you for your interests, for what you're good at, for what you for what you project out there and so let's just be thoughtful about how we present ourselves because how we are known really is how how others will will think of us when opportunities arise when when there are positions that need filled and um, when when they really could think of your name and open a new door for you that, that wouldn't otherwise be open so for this for this slide, looking at this Forbes article, um, I loved it. Step one, you have to acknowledge that you already have a personal brand. It's already there. So let's, let's work on it. And just to introduce the concept of what a personal brand is, this really was introduced into my professional life organically. In my first real job, it was actually um, at OSU in the International Admissions Office it, when I worked with Yulia. So it was about five years ago. And going into that position, I, I had a blank slate. Nobody knew me. I had never worked in an office environment before. And so I knew that I was really forging for myself into a brand new territory where I needed to establish what my reputation was. So there were a couple of things that I decided to do and in, in really early on that have stayed with me throughout my career. Number one, I decided to dress up. I decided to, to look professional and to take care in my appearance every day, even if, you know, the office norm was that you could wear a sweatshirt or you could, you know, come in without, without putting much effort into your appearance. So part of my personal brand that I established really early on was ready for anything and always looking professional. The second piece, that I started in those early days was I volunteered for everything. <laughs> I don't recommend this as, as a practice to do forever because you will stretch yourself too thin. 
but in the very early stages of my career, it was pivotal. It was so important to the trajectory of my career that I was open to taking on more projects, that I was collaborative and would raise my hand and offer to help other people, um, even if their department was different from my own. And with those two pieces, that's how I first started to build on my own personal brand. Um, and it opened up a lot of doors for me because people knew me as somebody who was up for the challenge or up for the project and someone who would represent uh, the, the team well because I was prepared and looked professional. Thank you. Thank you for that, Ashley. I think you brought up really good points about why personal branding matters. And uh, a really good way to look at personal branding uh, starts with some self-reflection. And we have a few questions for you to get to know you better before we proceed to the next section. So our first question is, how well do you think you currently understand personal branding? So I encourage all of you out there to, re to send us a response to the poll question. Okay. Greg's going to uh, set that question up. All right, the question is live, so go ahead and respond. And I'll have Greg describe the, the outcome once the responses come in. Okay, so it looks like 15% said very well, 62% said well, and 23% said not well. That's great. I think that's a really great mix. So those of you who understand it very well, feel free to put in your advice into the chat, uh, into the chat box, and we can share that out with people. And then, uh, of course, there's, uh, with personal branding, there's always room to learn or to revisit concepts. I, I always learn something new, uh, even when, I, when I'm the one presenting these webinars and I get questions or comments. So there's always room to grow. And then the people who understand it well or not very well, we're here to, to help you get to know it better. So thank you for joining us for that. And then we do have another question to get, again, to get to know you better. And the question is, are you currently job seeking or are you looking for a promotion? So go ahead and answer that once that's up and live. And the results are almost in, so we'll let you know in a moment here. All right, so 60% said yes, currently searching for a job, and 40% said no. Great. Well, for those of you who are job seeking or looking for a promotion, uh, I'm here to, to help you achieve that. And then those of you who are at the 40%, I think it's fantastic that you're here listening to, the, to this content because even if you're not job seeking, a personal brand, as Ashley said, we all have it. And so it's really good to be aware of what our personal brand is and to be intentional about it. So I commend you for attending this webinar, even though you're not job searching right now. So I loved what Ashley said about dressing for the, the position that you want and acting uh, in a way that really brings integrity to your work. I think that's fantastic advice. So when it comes to getting promotions or job seeking, it really starts with a little bit of self-reflection, figuring out where is it that you want to go? What are your what are your passions? What are your goals? And then how do you want to be perceived by others? The really great thing about looking for something like getting promoted or wanting to develop your skills is that you can use personal branding to highlight the strengths that you're, you're focusing on. And what I generally tell people is that the things that promote you forward in your career are not going to be necessarily the things you do in your day-to-day -day job. It's going to be the extra things. So it's going to be the way you show up. It's going to be uh, the things you volunteer for or the things that you do to, uh, for example, like to grow your skills or to develop yourself further. So those are the things that are going to make you stand out. And personal branding is all about highlighting those things and being intentional. And uh, we, we all have a... A, a brand and so part of the self-reflection is just understanding where where are you currently and where do you see yourself going and, and then aligning that and we'll talk more about the specifics of how to do that but definitely the, the self-reflection is the first step in that process 
All right. And so thinking about where to start. So you, you're ready to, to you, you've thought about a little bit about, about your goals. You know, if you want to move or if you want to stay or what, whatever it is that you end up deciding to do. So looking at what are some steps that you can take and where can you improve? And for example, one thing that you can use to reflect on where you currently stand is take a look at your personal or your, your social media profiles or better yet, find some people who you trust and say, hey, how am I being perceived by others? What are what are the things that stand out to me? If someone was described to me in a couple of words, what would those be? And then using that information to figure out, okay, what can I, where can I move forward? And Ash has given this advice in the past where people only know what you communicate to them. And so it's uh, it's not like a, this mysterious thing where you're not sure, like, okay, how am I being perceived? But if you ask people and you get you get familiar from uh, you get familiar with how your how, uh, how the things you're sharing and and portraying about yourself are being interpreted by others, and that's going to help you understand. Okay, where where can I go from there? And personal branding is about creating and rec- a recognizable personal or professional name and reputation for yourself. And we're, we'll talk a little bit more about how that ties in with things like values and what you stand for. But those are some things of, to consider when you're starting the, the thought, the thinking about personal branding. All right, and I'll turn it over to Ashley for the personal brand plan. Yeah, thank you, Ilya. So as you're thinking about your personal, think about someone that you admire and think known for. What, what traits or skill do they bring to the table that people think, ah, they'd be, they'd be great for this job or for this project. Um, you can think of things like someone who's really good at presenting, someone who's great in front of a group of people. You could think about who you would recommend in your life or on your team to, to represent your organization to, to an important visitor. Um, Something, something that came to mind when I, when I was first starting to think about personal branding was how you can really choose what you want your personal brand to be and, and project that out to the world. Um, and one example is I was sitting at a dinner and I was overhearing one of my colleagues introduce himself to, to some out of town visitors. And something he said was, I like to run. I like to run outside. I, I run every day. And he just was really saying it with, with such passion and such, um, in such clarity about, about his own interests and desires. And I, and I thought that was so, so simple, but so perfect. Cause that's how now, now he is known to that person that he's just met as someone who enjoys running. And so when they think of that, they'll think of him. Um, So using that as a very simplistic example, of course, but applying that to your work. Um, Think about what kind of projects or what kind of positions you want to be considered for in the future and what skill set apply directly to those. For instance, if you have an interest in data and compiling and analyzing data and you want to be given more opportunity to utilize those skills, and develop them, then do what it takes to to spread the word, communicate that out, what your interests are and what your skill set is. So much of this is really just raising your hand and saying, hey, that's me. That applies to me. That's something that resonates with me. So as you're creating your personal brand, the first thing, the first step is articulating it figuring out what key pieces you want to be known for as a starting point and maybe keep it simple. You can, you can put running, you can put being outdoorsy, you can put like things that are particular to your personal life um, as a starting point and then create simple steps. I read a really interesting article when it talks about how you can become an expert in anything. And the steps to take to become an expert are to research and be knowledgeable, of course, to create content, and then to also be involved in something, in something um, public, 
like for instance this webinar so the fact that Yulia and I are here talking to you about personal branding that's positioning ourselves as experts on personal branding so maybe next time when you are looking for somebody who knows about this topic you'll think of us and that's part of us personal brand so create those that's simple very steps that's for, very meta, Ashley. <laughs> yeah sorry <laughs> no it's all good um, I was just thinking like yeah because you're right it's uh we're like everything we do especially public is part of our personal brand and so we're personally branding ourselves with personal branding <laughs> Yeah, it's totally true. And it's what you're doing in your in your professional life. It's what you're doing online. It's how you introduce yourself to strangers, all of it. So create those simple steps about how to establish your, with that um, with that reputation. Um, and then check in on progress and see see how you've come. So I don't know if, if a lot of you struggle with this, but I'm great at starting project um, and then the follow follow through is what's difficult for me I think that checking in on your progress is really key it's really pivotal to make sure that if you if you started out on something if you started out to really establish for yourself a reputation that you're consistent with it because that's how you can really um, that's how you can really solidify that in your reputation and after you've had a chance to do a self-reflection and looking back and checking where you're at, refine your approach and maybe edit, edit your brand. Consider maybe I don't want to be known for that. Um, for instance, earlier in my career, I used to consider being, being a really diligent note taker and always being on time and well like that's of course a, a good trait to have always but but really just being being diligent and thorough and everything was what i wanted to be known for but then i realized my career aspirations were not to be um more of an executive assistant i didn't want to have secretarial roles i wanted to be more of a leader and so i realized that by projecting that out into the world and by being known as the, the one who will sit quietly and take notes and not engage in the conversation was actually against what I wanted in my professional life. So it's okay to refine your, your, refine your approach to kind of edit what you're projecting out into the world um, according to, to where you see your career going. Thank you, Ashley. And we actually have a poll question for the audience at this point. We'd love to know, do you have a personal brand plan? And so uh, Greg's going to post that live and then uh, put in your, your responses whenever the question pops up. All right, I think that's been enough time. So it seems pretty consistent. So about 20% said yes, and about 80% said no. Great, well now is your chance to create that personal brand plan. And definitely feel free to use me as a resource if you have uh, if you have troubles with that. And Ashley, I loved what you shared about you, you realizing and reframing the idea that being a diligent note taker maybe wasn't gonna move you forward. And I think that that's a great story and a great illustration of thinking about, okay, what are my future future goals? And, and the reality is that we can't be all things to all people. And so it's thinking, okay, what are the things that are most important? And I think you're totally right that uh, that being engaged in the conversation was gonna move you forward more. So I, I really appreciate you sharing that with us and, and being open about that process for yourself. All right, thank, thank you. you. Yeah. Yes. So next we're gonna talk about elevator speech and. Uh, Ashley, I'm really excited for you to share this stuff. We talk about this in every webinar. It's so important. I think your elevator speech is the most important part. Most hiring decisions are made within 90 seconds of meeting someone. So that's huge. And so, Ashley, I'm really excited for you to share about elevator speech, uh, speeches with the audience. Thank you. 
Yeah, this is a really important piece. Um, it, it applies to everything that the whether it be an interview, whether it be a casual uh, meeting with somebody who's in your industry or a new connection that you're making. What say when someone says, oh, nice to meet you, what do you do? You know, what is, what is your short description of, of um, who you are, what your, what your current situation is, and where you want to go in the future? And yeah, Yulia touched on this earlier, but uh, one of the aha a few years ago was nobody will know anything about me unless I tell them. So unless I articulate the, my values and who I am to them, they they won't know. They won't know my reputation. They won't know like my character or who I am. And so I need to figure out a way to communicate that to them. So use that as your inspiration. Really think about, really think about how you want to define yourself and how you want to be introduced to people. Um, because like Julia said, that first initial impression is really important. That's what people remember. So take time to consider. On, on this slide, we talk about having the short elevator speech about 30 seconds. And this is definitely something that you can prepare beforehand. So we all have recording devices on our phones. I take a few minutes and give your own elevator speech up in your phone and play it back to your that just really consider what pieces like what items you choose to share about yourself there's given and is highlight what you want is that how you want to be known produced and I I want you to also think pretty pretty deeply about what can infer about you from what you said about yourself. But imagine that they're they're reading a book and they're getting introduced. What do they know about after this short introduction? And then secondly, try to articulate your your introduction in a written bio. A lot of our introductions are made by email through LinkedIn. And it behooves you to have a short bio written up, just to have a few drafts of how you how you are want to be introduced and how you want to how you want to be represented um, in the web or in written. And that's something that you can modify and create. Oh, so as you develop, as your values change, maybe as your as your career aspirations develop and mature, you can modify it. But just like you should always have your resume up to date and you should always be modifying it and updating it, you should have a, a short bio in constant evolution so that, so that it can always be, um, always be current. So um, in a past position, I worked for an MBA program where I did a lot of elevator speech um, workshops interviews and um, and and mock interview elevator speeches that were not critiqued or not, not critiqued is the right word not um, not curated and so I know from this experience that a lot of us tend to, to think in chronological order when they're when we're talking about who we are and, and what our bio is and so we want to tell our life story and that's not necessary you don't need to tell everything um, you don't need to go in a, in a timeline fashion the elevator speech is really to highlight a few key points about who you are um, where you've been of course what is your past experience and where you're going or where you'd like to go. And it's okay also to highlight a few of your big accomplishments in this elevator speech. It's not bragging. 
it is it is communicating with others um, who you are and what you've done, and that is that is totally fine. In establishing your personal brand, you you need to be your own advocate, and so it's okay to say good things about yourself and the work that you've done. That's really great advice, and I especially love what you shared about just uh, reframing. And I think that uh, it's not, like you said, it's not chronological. It's reframing things and highlighting the most relevant information. And I do want to share an example of this. So I worked with a woman who had been so, so for a variety of reasons she had been unemployed for over a year, and we we did one main thing together, which is we frame her elevator speech and then talked about how to connect with more people. So with just those two things, so so her elevator speech, making it positive, making it be futuristic. And even though obviously she's had this negative experience, we were able to articulate in a way that still showed how she was getting involved professionally and developing herself and she was still eager to be part of the industry. So those two things made an impact. And when I work with people, I typically do a three-week check-in. And before those three weeks were even up, she already had a job offer from applying these skills. So even people who have experienced things like being let go and being unemployed for a year can use these things to really move themselves forward. And so that's why I really strongly recommend this as the very first step. And I know we spent a lot of time on this topic, but it, it really does make a, a big difference. So thank you, Ashley, for sharing that. And then we do have some questions from the audience that we wanted to address. Um, one was on the audio quality, and unfortunately, uh, we, our audio is what it is. Um, and Greg, I don't know if you're able to comment additionally on audio. Um, not. I think this is about as good as it's going to get. We can record it, and uh, we'll share that out, and hopefully um, we can fix a little bit of it in the, the post-production. Thank you, Greg. I appreciate that. And then someone asked about articles and books. I love that question. So. What I'll do is I'll prepare a list of articles and books and then send it out when we send the recording as well. That's a good question about resources, and I appreciate you asking that. All right, we're going to go on to step number two, which is building your network. The great thing about building your network is that you don't have to start from scratch. So if you have a list of people that you already uh, worked with in the past, you can reach out to people and do just like short check-ins or phone calls or coffee or something like that. But building your network is about connecting with people who you've already connected with, sharing your your experience, finding out what they're about. And uh, I always like to share just how Ashley know, and I know each other because we did meet at Intel with you and we were both working there. We had an initial coffee meeting, just asked each other questions, and then over time we've stayed in touch via LinkedIn, and then occasionally for like uh, connecting back with each other, saying like congratulations, and then over time we've just become more and more connected with each other, and then now we're involved in this way, but who knows what the future will bring. And so it's not that you're necessarily always having to find new contacts, uh, but we'll definitely talk about how to do that as well. And so keeping in touch with a few key people at past organizations is going to be really helpful for you. There's going to be people in your network who are people who know lots of people. And they're the people that you'll want to follow or connect with or do coffee with because typically they are the ones who are like, oh, I know someone who you should talk to or something like that. Or the other thing you can do is actually ask people when you meet with them, oh, who else can I talk to that you think would be great for me to know? And it can be as simple as like, one reach out a week, and that can really significantly improve your, your network. And with when it comes to job seeking and promotions, essentially what you're doing is you're connecting with people who have the job you want, who potentially might have the job you want, or who's supervising that role. And that's going to keep building up your network within, within, uh, that specific, uh, within that specific group. And then... Uh, in, in talking about that, reaching out to people. So building your network is going to be reaching out to people and developing authentic relationships. And authentic relationships are not ones where it's a take take. It's a it's really it's a it's a give and take, and you're getting and you're connecting with people and finding out what are they doing, what uh, what are they up to, what are they excited about, and you can do that with a variety of ways. Uh, one that I recommend is 
joining or attending events or conferences. So a conference is a fantastic way to build up a base of people then to reach out to. And typically what I do is I attend a conference, I get a bunch of business cards, I connect with people on LinkedIn, and I send them an email saying, thank you, it was nice to meet you. Or I send them a LinkedIn message, thank you, it was nice to meet you. And then if it's someone who's working on something that I'm curious about, or if it's someone that I could see myself really uh, maybe uh, connecting well with, then I'll schedule like a 15 minute call uh, that's not it's not always necessary to do a call. It's sometimes just that LinkedIn connection is going to be great for you. But that's something I recommend. And then revisiting with existing connections. So thinking about, okay, who uh, maybe has moved on to a different organization that I can uh, just touch base with or do lunch with or something like that. So these are just a few examples of ways that you can continue to build up, build up your network uh, as you're thinking about your personal brand and as you're communicating out your what you what you're up to and what you're about. Definitely. And can I have a little check in on my audio at this point? Is it a little bit better? If anyone wants to chat out and uh, we can we can hear. It. All right, yes, it sounds better. Thank you. Okay, good. I'm glad to hear that. So touching base on, on social media accounts, I want you to consider your, your presence on social media, your presence in a public park. This is, this is how you're represented to the, to the entire, to really the entire world and anyone that will um, do a quick search of your name or, or come across you by accident. So do a quick review. Review your social media accounts, perhaps even with the view of what they what they look like publicly for those of us who have who have private social media accounts. This is also a really good exercise to do with a friend, with someone that you trust who could go through your account and tell you what kind of message you're sending out into the world by the things that you're posting. Definitely do that, um, do that self reflection and compare your profile with, with what you have already determined that you stand for, what your values are, what you want to be known for, and make sure that those are lining up. And then keep it updated. Don't, don't leave things stagnant, because um, we know that we're constantly evolving and we're maturing as people. And you want to, um, you want to make sure that your, your presence on the internet is also updated and how you would want yourself to be to be currently represented. And really all, all mediums count. It's not just LinkedIn that we're talking about here. We're talking about Instagram, we're talking about Snapchat, you know, anything that you're that you're sending out into the into the World Wide Web is representing yourself and contributing to that personal brand, contributing to your reputation and what you're what you're known for. Something that you can do to earn trust with the people in your network is to have a consistent message. So don't be a different person on Instagram than you are on Facebook, than you are on LinkedIn, than you are in person. Um, keep it consistent and make it so that people know what to expect from your voice because they, they know what your values are and what you stand for. On LinkedIn, I found this to be really effective, especially in recent days, as a way to keep up with your network as everybody is dispersing. You know, everybody's going on to different positions and new jobs, and this is a way for you to maintain contact, but try not to be a silent observer here. To really establish your personal brand, you need to be creating some content and you need to be engaging in the conversation. So write a comment, share an article, write an article. LinkedIn has that great, uh, that great feature where you can write an article and add a picture, add links, and publish it right to their platform. And it's a great way to, to get the word out there of things that really matter to you. So I encourage you to do it. Um, it's also really interesting because LinkedIn will share with you who your, who your post has reached. 
So you'll be able to see in what areas your message is getting out, in what industries, and, and people in what positions are looking at your content. So I encourage you to be a contributor there. Something that you, uh, Yulia and I have talked about quite a bit is, again, getting that second, second perspective, getting a friend to review your profile, because on LinkedIn, I think this is where a lot of people are tempted to just do the chronological approach. I worked here, I worked here, I worked here. Um, so I, I hope that you will take a look at your LinkedIn profile and try to give it a little bit more, um, more meat, make it a little bit more interesting and show, show more about your character and who you are than just the places that you've worked so far. Thank you so much for sharing that, Ashton. I do want to tie in as well for LinkedIn that especially if you're looking to change industries or if you're to, looking to change companies or to get a promotion, find people on LinkedIn who are doing the kind of work you want to do and see what are they posting about, who are they following, what is their profile like, and see if there's some things that you can uh, add to your own profile. And I have seen people do this very, very well, where they rebrand themselves based on the kind of core competencies that their future position requires them to do. And it's never been easier to do that with the way that LinkedIn is set up or the way that you can use Twitter and other platforms. So that's something that I think is uh, sometimes overlooked, but a very, very helpful thing if you're thinking of promotions or job searching. All right, our next one is engaging with your industry. And I will tie in a couple of things that Ashley said. So consistency really matters. And uh, the two things that are on the slide are the two easiest ways to engage with your industry. So especially on LinkedIn or Twitter, you can spend time looking at industry related articles or sharing one or commenting or sharing someone else's post. So those are really easy, low time commitment things. I think Twitter is especially great for industry engagement. You can follow influencers, you can follow people, you can comment. And uh, I've created a lot of really great relationships solely through Twitter. For example, like next week I'm doing this like Twitter Q&A for alumni career services. And someone just randomly saw my posts and commented back and asked me to, to do this. So it didn't really take much time for me to create this connection because it was just replying back to a few Twitter posts. So I highly encourage that. And then some other things to create expertise, especially let's say you are wanting Let's say you're in a role and you're wanting to go like a step farther or a couple steps above what, what you're doing now. Being an expert in that in the the, the new um, topic or industry that you're looking to go into, that's going to help your personal brand. So one a couple a couple things to build expertise would be publish like Ash was saying, publish on LinkedIn or blogs or present at conferences or workshops. These are all ways to engage with your industry. And this one had so many points. So you can you can meet people because people are meeting you and getting to know you. You can show your expertise. You can share your message and your 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 what you what you know. It just it hits on all these points. So if you're if you're in that in that spot of wanting to do something other than what you're doing now, this is the the thing that I would recommend that you focus on the most once you've done uh, your your elevator speech and, and reframing. And we do have, uh, we have another audience question. Now that we've covered some things uh, about personal branding, we'd love to revisit with you and find out, one, do you have any other questions? And so feel free to use the chat box for questions. And then two is how well do you now think you understand the basics of personal branding now that you've heard some information from Ashley and I? So go ahead and respond. All right, I think that's about time, so we'll go ahead and close it. And the results are 50% very well, 33% well, and 17% not well. Great, thank you. So fantastic about the 50% very well. That's really great news. So from the not very well, I'd love to hear your questions or things that we can address to help you get to the, the well part. So go ahead and put some of those things. We're also going to do a summary. But Ashley and I are here as a resource for you. 
And obviously, uh, the, the topic of personal branding is very big. There's so much to cover and there's so much to, to uh, discover in the, in, the, in the topic. So let us know what your questions are and then um, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll go ahead and, and answer a couple if people put some in. All right, no questions so far, but do put them in if you think of some. And so we're gonna go ahead and I'll turn it over to Ashley for, the, for some summary points. Thanks, Celia. Yeah, happy to happy to go over the summary points of what we've covered thus far. So in establishing that personal brand, the first step is to really know, know who you are and how you want to present yourself. So reflect on your goals, reflect on where you want to go and make sure that the make sure that the pieces that you're going to choose to incorporate into your personal brand are in alignment with your career uh, projection where, you, where you'd like to see yourself. Please create or update your 30 second elevator speech. Make sure that you're prepared for, for that. So what do you do question um, that happens to, to all of us in our day to day. Take the time to be thoughtful about your online presence. It's so important these days that your online presence reflects your, your professionalism and your character just as much as a face-to-face -face interaction would. Establish that trust by maintaining a consistent message in your work, in your personal interactions, and in your online presence for sure. People can pick up on inconsistencies and that's such a red flag in a you know in our in our natural international relationship building with others and so please be consistent there and then really use the tools and the resources that you have use your social media a lot of us um, like I'm on Instagram more than I'm more than I'm on any other platform these days and it's definitely been a tool that I've used to to really showcase what's important to me and what what I value um, and also too to make yourself personable and accessible to, to those in your network so that you're someone that they'd want to reach out to. And then lastly, of course, connect with others in your industry. Really be an active participant, be a contributor, be a content creator, because that's the best way to really establish for yourself a brand that you're known for. And, um, and just so you can ensure that when people bring up your name, when your name comes up in conversation, that the, the qualities and attributes that they think of are, are what, you, what you want to be known for. That was a really great summary. And I was thinking through just what advice I would give to the people who are still feeling that uncertainty of like, I'm not, I don't understand personal branding very well. Uh, one thing that you could consider doing is finding a mentor and that's someone who either has done this this well, so has a, a strong, what you perceive as a strong personal brand, or someone who has done what you're wanting to do. So it can be any of those categories and having them and talking them through some of the things that you're doing, creating some action steps that you can then follow up on. Uh, and then the other option is I'm always available to help out. So if you're struggling with, okay, I don't even understand the basics or I'm not sure where this is overwhelming or I'm not sure what to do next, definitely reach out to me. We can do a phone call or we can, if you're in the Corvallis or Portland area or, or local, we can do coffee or something. But I would love to help you uh, with your personal brand plan. I think that it, it's so helpful for not just not just job seekers and people who are out there looking for new opportunities, but it can help you in your current role too. And so if you're at that point where you're still struggling with that, with this topic, don't hesitate to reach out. I definitely, I definitely want to help you out and, and help you achieve, achieve the, uh, your goals. So a couple next steps for you. If you're OSU alumni, student or staff or faculty, you can join our OSU Beaver Careers LinkedIn group. Definitely recommend doing that. And you can, uh, I recommend that you reach out to three previous coworkers and see how they are doing. So you can do this just via email, you can invite them for coffee uh, or, or connect with them on LinkedIn or something, but just to spark that 
that like, hey, I remember you, it was great to work with you, how are you doing now, or something like that. Or if you see they're getting a promotion, you can say, hey, congratulations, you know, what are you doing now, what's it like, etc. So I encourage you to do that. And then the third one that you can do is you can message me one takeaway from the webinar. You can do that via LinkedIn or email, and you'll be entered to win a free career consultation. So every webinar we've been offering this, and every webinar we've had a winner or two. And so I do 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 that, especially if you're still trying to figure out how to uh, create your personal brand plan. And then uh, do we have any other questions, Greg? We do. We have a new one. Uh, they're curious about... Um, discussing their personal brand and the best way to get in touch with you and if you have uh, contact information. Absolutely, yep. So I will I will do show that next. So that's a really great question. And like I said, I really like this stuff is for me, just like I think it's so important and even just a couple small steps can really make a big difference for you. So feel free to reach out to me and uh, and I'm happy, I'm happy to help you out. So I'm going to talk about our next webinar and then I'll share my contact information. So our next webinar is on salary negotiation. So really fantastic topic and can can make a big difference in your life. So do I do consider November 15th, it's going to be similar format with OSU Pays. And I'm going to be talking about how to negotiate your salary and other benefits to really get the best deal possible. So join us for that on November 15th. And then follow up with me. So here's my contact information. You can email me. I'm usually pretty quick when it comes to email. Reach out to me. Like I said, we can we can talk more about what is your personal brand plan and how what kind of steps can you take to really move yourself forward. And then Ashley, any last thoughts from you? I'd love to to hear if you if you have any other nuggets to share with the the audience. Um, no, nothing big, but just to really, just to really encourage you that this, this is something that has the potential to change your, change your career. Um, I, I definitely attribute a lot of my success to the personal brand that I was able to establish early on. And I'm still reaping the benefits of that, of, of establishing a strong reputation and being consistent with it. So, so please, um, don't give up develop your plan and continue to work on it, continue to fine tune it, because I think it could really add value to your career. Thank you. And a really big thank you, Ashley, for presenting this. This is all volunteer hours for you. And I really appreciate you sharing your advice and expertise uh, with the, the OSU community. And thank you, Greg, for doing all the back end stuff and working through our audio and starting issues and all those things. I really appreciate you helping us out with all these things. Of course, and we had a last question that someone asked for a slide deck. So that'll be part of the uh, the follow-up email along with the uh, the link for the this video uh, version of it. Yep, and then you'll also get those articles and books as well in that email. All right, great, thank you. All right, thank you so much, Ashley and Yulia. That was fantastic. So I did want to provide just a little bit more information to our audience. I talked about professional and continuing education here at OSU. And the reason we like to partner with the Alumni Association and hear from our alumni is because we're often able to connect with the very widespread OSU network throughout not only the state of Oregon, but the US and beyond. And we can help provide educational opportunities for personal enrichment and professional development. So each program we offer is designed for working professionals with convenient online classes and year round start dates. We also offer customizable team training. And again, I just want to thank Yulia and Ashley, and we really appreciate having you guys here. And this was great, and you delivered such great content on personal brand and, and building like your elevator speech, and I thought that was great. So thank you, everyone, for attending, and we look forward to seeing you on the next webinar.